Dream Tower Media presents Literary Wonder and Adventure Show's Halloween Special, hosted by Robert Zoltan with Edgar the Raven. Hello, folks. Welcome to the special Halloween episode of Literary Wonder and Adventure Show. I'm your host, Robert Zoltan, along with my sidekick, Edgar the Raven, who is busy uh, rehearsing the one line, one word, actually, that he has to repeat for today's reading of The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, Edgar, you, uh, Edgar, you about ready? Okay, but make it quick. Try not to overthink it. Just just act natural. I'm trying. I'm, tr- I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, brother. Typical actor. Overthinking everything. Well, until then, maybe we'll get some trick-or-treaters. We haven't gotten any yet, but uh, I do have a lamp in the window, so I... Oh, hey. Maybe that's our first one. Let's go check out what the kids are wearing this year. Hey, trick or treat! How you doing there? Uh, um. Did you know what I am? Mm, I'm not sure. Are you? Um. Old people must be stupid. Yeah, well, maybe you'll be stupid one day. <sighs> Here you go. A nice, fresh, juicy, healthy, delicious apple. An apple? Don't you have any candy? Nah, you don't want candy. That just rots your teeth and your brain. What if it's got a razor blade in it? Uh, We'll just save it till you're old and stupid and you can use it to shave. (laughs) Brat. Now I see why tigers eat their young. Oh, Johnny. Oh, hi. Trick or treat? Uh, Trick or treat. Happy Halloween. Yes, I suppose. Wow, that's really amazing. Is is that a makeup job or a mask or... Yeah, you look just like Peter Lorre. Oh, thank you kindly. But all, all I did was comb my hair. Here you go. A nice apple. Ah, a piece of fruit. I don't suppose you would have a cigarette. A cigarette? No, sorry. I, I don't hand out cigarettes on Halloween. Yeah, I guess I'll have to make do with the apple. Well, thank you very kindly, and good evening to you. Good evening. All right, buddy, you ready? Uh, I guess so. It'll be fine. Okay, let's do it. Cue the music, and... The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. 
and the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. That it is, and nothing more." Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore? This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeyance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, Though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed With seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door, With such name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, As if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, Other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven, still beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy onto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, Perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee respite, respite and nepenthe, from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. 
prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Let's do it again. <laughs> Maybe next year, Edgar. And hey, buddy, you did a good job on that voice. Yeah. Ah, uh, thanks a lot. You know, you pushed the drama a little bit, a little bit of the William Shatner school of acting. Hey. Was, no, I mean that in the best possible way. Seriously, I love, I love Shatner. Folks, I hope you enjoyed our special Halloween reading of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. And happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, folks. Hey, do you hear that? Sounds like somebody tapping. Yeah, somebody rapping, rapping at the Dream Tower door. It's kind of late for trick-or-treaters, though. Well, uh, better check it out. Hello? Hello? Howdy-do. Is anybody out there? Hello? Hello? Hello?